Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to be talking about the Battle of Cross Keys, located in Rockingham County, Virginia, on June 8, 1862. General Jackson was doing well after his victory at Winchester on May 25th, so he advanced towards Harper's Ferry and the Potomac River. U.S. Major General John C. Fremont and U.S. Brigadier General James Shields were approaching and attempted to cut Jackson off at the town of Strasburg. They barely missed Jackson's infantry there. Shortly after this, Jackson's cavalry commander, C.S. Brigadier General Turner Ashby, also known as the Black Knight, was killed in a skirmish on their way to Harrisburg. In response to this loss and the harassment by the Union forces, Jackson ordered Confederate Major General Richard S. Ewell to hold back Fremont. Commanding his 5,000 men in three brigades were Ewell's three generals, Arnold Elzey, George H. Stewart, and Isaac R. Trimble. Along with four batteries of artillery, they were directed to stop the Union for as long as possible. Ewell selected Cross Keys, a local tavern located a few miles southeast of Harrisburg. He stationed his artillery along with Elzey's brigade at the center of the line. The remaining troops under Stuart and Trimble were placed on either side of Elzey in the surrounding woods. At 9 a.m., the Union forces encountered the Confederate pickets at Union Church. Fighting started, but took long enough to give the Confederates time to finish their defenses. The Confederates and Union engaged in an artillery duel, while Fremont deployed his infantry in a line southeast of Kieselton Road. Fremont had more than 10,500 men divided into six infantry brigades, one cavalry brigade, and ten batteries of artillery. The infantry was commanded by several generals, including Julius Stahel, Henry Bolin, Robert H. Milroy, Robert C. Schenck, and two U.S. colonels, John A. Colts and Gustav P. Cluseret. Ewell ordered Stahl's brigade into the eastern woods. There he encountered some skirmishers, but did not see the Confederate main force. The Confederates under Trimble allow Stahel to approach within less than 50 yards. While hidden behind a fence and bushes, they delivered a horrific volley of fire, breaking Stahl's men and causing a retreat. Trimble followed up and ordered the largest part of his troops forward, successfully driving the Union back. While Trimble's flank was pushing the Union back in front of them, the Union center and right kept pushing forward, but not making a lot of success against the Confederates. To make matters worse, reinforcements had arrived from Jackson, buffering the Confederate army. Before General Schenck could move his Union forces to respond, Fremont had ordered the Union army to withdraw from the fighting. The resulting casualties for the Union were 557 killed and wounded and 100 captured, while the Confederates suffered a total of 288 dead and wounded. Please join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.